All right, so welcome back. And on this one, we're going to talk about some mods uh, we get with uh, Bitwick. So we're going to talk about the fourth stage, the envelope folder, ADSR and AHDSR. So we're going to start with the envelope folder because it's the uh, easy one. And then we're going to go with the uh, like the hard one, which is the fourth stage. And once you get the, the first two, the ADSR and the AHDSR, are going to be really simple. They're going to be really, really simple uh, 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 to the point that I just don't need to explain to explain this. So, okay, so let's so let's start with the uh, with the envelope fuller. I have a piano right here. This is the sound I get right now. Pretty dumb piano. Right, super simple. Maybe it's too fast. Let me go to something normal. All right, that, that's it. Just a dumb piano. So I'm going to go right here at the bottom and I get a filter. So of course, if we do some filtering, maybe a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and we are just filtering the piano. All right, so pretty simple stuff. So now what we want to do, we want to modulate this buttons. And this is why the way we get these controls, this modulators. So if I click on this one, if we go to envelope right here, you're going to get a bunch, but we're going to talk about first of the envelope follower. So this is the one. Okay, so let me select it first. Okay, so this one will work with audio. So the audio signal that will go gonna go and play right here is gonna go all over here. It's gonna enter right over right here, and this one is gonna listen to what this is playing. Right, that's the point. Now, depending on what what is playing right here, is gonna try to follow the sound, follow the shape, this waveform we have right here, to uh, provide an instruction to move this knob around. That's it. It's a modulator. So if I play something right now, uh, I'm going to go play it. Notice that we get some movement right here. Now, of course, just like we get with any modulator, we just get some options right here. I'm going to go and put everything to zero. And of course, I'm going to explain what this does. So of course, the sound it will come in. This one is listening to the sound and depends on how the sound, uh, th how this sounds is going to go and move a knob. So in this case, the first thing we need to do, uh, we need to decide which uh, element we want to move, which knob. So I'm going to go and select this one, and I'm going to do just a little bit. That's it. So in theory, the sound will come in. This one will listen, and uh, depends on what, uh, what envelope we have right here, this one is going to move. So if I play this, notice that we get some movement right here. All right. So the first thing is notice that uh, on this one, on this panel, you get the waveform. You get a representation of the waveform. And this is how this knob is moving. And notice that this is very choppy right here. So choppy. And right here is choppy as well. And this is because we need to provide a little bit more information uh, to what this needs to do. Since this piano, it's playing really, really fast. I want to say really, really fast, but it's kind of fast. Uh, the uh, right here, uh, it's uh, just looks choppy because this is what it, it is actually listening. Now, then we get the rise and the fall controls. And these ones are like the, like the attack and release of a compressor, pretty much the same idea. So the rise will decide how much or how long the initial or the start is going to be, and then how slow or how fast the release is going to be. That's going to be the fall. So of course, right now they are at zero, right? And we are doing a little bit of modulation right here. So we get a choppy sound. All right. Since the sound, the piano sound, it's super fast, or it's kind of fast, we need a way, we need to provide some controls right here to tell the envelope follower that what it, the signal that it's coming right here, it's pretty fast. So just like we do with the compressor, if we want to catch the initial peak of something, we're going to go and select the rise to zero because it's super fast. So in this case, it will go and it will just catch the initial transient. And that's why we get some movement and everything's so choppy. Now, at one point, the uh, the this envelope folder will go start up right here. And just like we get right here, it's going to start on this part. Let me make it bigger. It's going to start right here. It's going to go up. And at one point, it needs to go down. Now, since everything's so fast, it's just going up and down, up and down with each transient. So since we are going to uh, going to go up, we need to tell the uh, the envelope follower that we need for the envelope follower to wait a little bit before it goes down again. So if I play this, let me just go back here because it's just annoying, and I'm going to provide a little bit of fall. So notice that right here, this is going to start changing. Not so choppy anymore. 
and it looks like an actual, like an envelope. And another thing is happening. Notice that right here we get a much more natural uh, movement. We don't get that up and down, up and down again. It's just following the actual sound. So of course, depends on the uh, on the track that you're playing, depends on what you want to do. You need, you really need to adjust this. If not, you're just not gonna get what you want. All right. So sometimes to do a little bit more of this, you need to to do a little bit more of this. So right now we are just not doing a, a lot. If I go, notice that it's just not a lot. If we want more, we need to go more. And notice that right now we get a much more aggressive movement. All right. So pretty simple, pretty basic. Now, of course, uh, right now we are just modulating a single knob, which is cool. Maybe that's what you want. But of course, you can modulate as many uh, modules uh, you want right here. So if I play this and go right here and do the same, now we are modulating both. Notice that's going this motion. All right. So, of course, you can choose as many knobs as you wish. It's completely uh, up to you. But of course, remember always that the rise and the fall is very important. Then we get other controls like the gain. Now the sound comes in right here, but sometimes the sound is just not uh, loud enough to feed the envelope follower. So we are not going to get a super aggressive motion. We are not going to get something aggressive right here. So what you can do, you can drive the, uh, the, uh, the module a little bit more by adjusting the gain. So if I do more, I'm going to get more, much more aggressive. Look at the look at the waveform right here. So of course, if you're playing a sound and you're just not getting anything right here, trying to adjust the gain just a little bit more. Then we we'll get the mode. Now this one is the one that we get by default, and it's like the most aggressive, just so to speak, it's like the aggressive one. The RMS is a little bit more smooth. And of course, this one, the RMS, reacts with the volume. So since we have a lot, it's just reacting more. There is a tiny difference. Tiny, tiny difference. Of course, it depends on what you want to do. You should try both, right? Maybe this one suits you better with these type of sound you want to get. And then, uh, just to wrap this up, because this is pretty, pretty easy, you get the amount control. Right, right now, we are just doing 100% of this one. But maybe you just decide that this is too aggressive. And instead of adjusting everything we have right here, just selecting and going lower, what you can do, you can just provide less. It's like the mix or the blend control. Right? Notice that we are just doing a little bit more of everything every time I go down. Right. So that's it. The envelope folder will listen something. Then it will try to reproduce the same movement what, with, uh, what comes in. And you need to adjust the rise and the fall just to create the, uh, the, the correct envelope to do the modulation. All right, so then we have another one. I'm gonna just turn this off because I'm gonna go to a different track. I'm gonna go put this one at the top and put this one at the bottom. So I'm gonna go and play this one and this is what we get. I know, pretty dumb, pretty dull sound, piano sound. Okay, so what we get, the other one, uh, I wanna talk about the fourth stage. Now, once we get this one, uh, we pretty much, we're going to get everything else because this one we have, we get a lot of things. So, okay, so I'm going to go and play it again. And the first thing that you need to notice is that every time a note plays, a MIDI note plays, this one is going to go and move. That's the first thing that's happening. So this one will react to each note. Man, I'm talking about MIDI notes, just reacting to that. Now, as you can see, uh, this looks like an envelope. But it's not an envelope. You, you could say sort it's kind of an envelope, but it's just really not. Uh, what we can do with this one, we get four different points and we can draw something. Now, as you know, with an envelope, you get like a HDSR, right? So on this one, you can tailor to whatever you want. So it's not just an HDSR. Notice that we cannot do this with an H HDSR. So again, you just get four different poles to draw whatever you want. And at the end of the day, this one will do what a modulator will do. It will go, we're gonna link this to a control and the control is gonna move this way. 
this uh, it's like moving like an M, it's like just doing that. So if I go and select something like this and just maybe do that, we're gonna see some movement right here. I'm gonna go and play it. All right. So that's it. That's that's what it does. Now notice that the uh, that every time we uh, play a key, uh, uh, we just detect a MIDI note. This one is gonna start the playback right here. It's gonna move and start doing the loop. The thing is that the next note it's really close to this one. So when this plays, everything will restart. So we will never reach the four poles, the four steps or stages in this case. That's the, the first thing you need to know. Now, of course, this depends on how fast or how slow your track is or how close your notes are. If I go really slow, like uh, typically slow, like, I don't know, 40 or 30 and play it back, it is going to pretty much play the whole thing. All right. So, of course, this depends on uh, how fast you want to go. If you want to uh, make this closer, we can make this closer. No problem. And now we're going to get the four uh, steps, the four stages. So if I go and play it. Right. Let's go a little bit faster. And of course, take a look at what happens right here. It's following this movement. Just going up, down, up and down. So this was it is what what's the uh, what is the fourth stage is going to do? It's just going to go and follow the instruction that you're providing right here, and it will move the knob. Now remember that if the loop uh, will not reach here, you're not going to get the four the fourth stages, right? All right. So in this one, you get much more controls because you get the four poles, the four stages, which is cool, you know. But what you can do, you can control uh, right here this slope, which is pretty cool. It's a nice addition. Just to add a uh, just a, a little bit of uh, different movement right here to the knob. Notice that it's like, it's a much more smooth. All right. Now you can control what happens by going and clicking right here to this one. You can go up and you can go down, right? So just to adjust the slope, pretty simple stuff. I, I feel like I don't need to explain this. Now, right here, we're going, uh, when it go, we are going a different, uh, what, as a speed, right? So this one it will divide and it's going to go a little bit slower. So maybe it's going too fast for you trying to adjust, go to this one and it will just go slower. All right. So this controls is pretty much to control the position. Something that you could do by dragging, uh, clicking and dragging, right? Really simple. Okay. So right now, what we are doing, we are going up and down, up and down. We, we know that. Now, the thing is that we start at one point then we go up, then we go to the original point, like zero, for example, and then we go up and then back again. But it's always starting from this zero position because uh, it is the start of the of this value. Now, what you can do, you can go and click plus and minus, and it will go and divide the screen in two. So what you can do, you can go down, but you can go up again. You can go up and then down to the other side. So if I go here and play this, Notice that it's going up, then it's going down, like here, for example, and then going up again. So you can do positive and negative movement, which is something that you don't get with the envelope follower, which is really, really cool. All right, so another thing you can do right here, you get the zoom, and this one is just to zoom, right? Right now, it's like uh, very, very short, very small, because you get much more space, because maybe you have a very sustained sound, and you can get, uh, you can make a much larger, larger uh, movement. Uh, that's it. That's the only thing. Uh, that's why we're going to use it. And of course, if you click it again, you're going to go back to the assumed regular position. And uh, this one, it's absurd. It's like really, really long. You can actually see this if I play something. Uh, we are not going to be able to play to the four, four poles because it's super, super slow. If I go a little faster, it doesn't matter. Still super slow. All right. Okay. So that's why we get that, that zoom uh, option. All right. So then what you get right here, you get how much of this you want to do. And this one is like the envelope follower. Let me just bring the follower right here. If it's letting me, because it's not, I'm using the beta. So I'm not sure if it's uh, working properly uh, with the envelope follower. We get, uh, we get this control right here at the bottom. Yeah. So this one, it's pretty much the same way It's how much the uh, amount of this one we want to do. So if I play this, 
And uh, of course, I'm going to adjust this so we can go really aggressive on this one. And if I go down, we start to get less of this. And this one goes up and down pretty much the same way. So if I go right here, we get the same result than going up and down. Now, if I adjust this and go all the way up, not negative and positive, just positive, and go down, we go the other way. Notice that it's going backwards. So yeah, so pretty good. So maybe you're going, you're just uh, playing something and you're going just up. Well, if you go on to try the other way, you just go the other way and it will do the same motion, but the other, the other side, you know, to the other, to the other way, to the negative way, way. So pretty cool, right? So pretty nice addition. All right, so let me just zoom and do something that makes sense because this one, what we are doing right now is just nothing. Just dumb. All right, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to disable this one and I'm going to play it. And let's see what we get. All right. So right now we're just not doing anything. I'm going to do a little bit of this. Okay. Okay, so right now we're just going up and we are going through the four different uh, four different stages. Uh, right here you get an option and you can disable how this, uh, how this works. Right now we are going to loop and we're going to loop through the whole thing, right? We're going to let uh, loop until the sound dies, right? But what you can do, you can say, okay, so I only want to use the pole one and the two. So if I play this, notice that it's just like repeating the same movement twice because it's stopping on the number two. And then of course it's looping. If I make it really, really, uh, really big, it will not reach the end of it. But if you make it really short, it's going to go and stop in the number two. You can do the same thing with the number one and just use the pole number one or the pole number three. Same idea. And of course, if you use the four poles, it's pretty much the same thing. But the sound is just like ending on the pole in four and then starting back again. If I select this one, this one is going to continue, will not restart. So there's no loop. It's just playing until it dies. That's the difference between, between the, the off and the number four. This one, it loops when it reaches the number four. And on the other one, it will not loop. It's gonna uh, play until it dies or the next note gets played. All right, and just to finish this, we have the poly. Uh, and this one, I, I need to do a little bit more explaining and I need to use a different example. If not, you're just not gonna get it. So I'm gonna go at the beginning and I'm gonna play this uh, sound. And I know, pretty dumb sound, right? Okay, so I'm going to go right here. We don't have uh, the fourth stage. I'm going to add it right here. I'm going to go and play it. Now, right now, uh, the poly, it's, uh, I'm going to disable this, right? So every time a note, uh, this uh, fourth stage will detect a note, this will just execute. It will start uh, with the loop, with the playback. So if I play this, second, third, and fourth. Now, notice that every time it detects a note, it's restarting everything. It's just going back to the beginning. So this means that again, as soon as a node gets detected, it will restart. Now with the poly, what uh, this is going to do, uh, it will just pretty much make the four notes or every time we detect a note independent. So if I play this, notice that it's not restarting. It's just doing it again on a separate uh, kind of a channel for that note. So we are going to get some movement on this four different uh, notes and it will not restart. So if I do again something dumb like this and maybe go to the filter and do a little bit of movement, I'm going to go and play it and we're going to see the difference. Okay. Right. So everything's like super slow. I'm going to go a little bit fast and start over. Maybe 100 makes sense. And if I do, and if I disable, notice it's going to be a little bit different. Everything is just following a single movement. It restarts back from the beginning, but the other notes will not restart when we play them back. So that's why you get poly, right? So pretty simple. Now, uh, of course, uh, this control is really important because we get them on all the other modulators. Now, that's it. For this one, we don't need to do much. That's it. That's, the, that's all the controls. It's pretty simple to understand. And then, of course, we get, we get the other ones. And I feel like at this point, 
once you know the envelope follower and the fourth stage, you don't need to learn the other ones because they are really dumb. Now, if you don't get them, it's because you maybe uh, need to learn a little bit more about what ADSR is, because that's that's what this is. We just get an ADSR just uh, to get uh, we get the to create the uh, the envelope, and then we just use it to provide uh, what this is going to do. Right? We just that's it. Uh, again, I, don't, I feel like I don't need to explain anything. If you have doubts, it's because you need to know a little bit more about ADSR. Just go to the web and ask what is ADSR. So essentially what this is doing is just following this movement. That's it. That's what it's doing. So notice that the sound when it starts goes up and then it never goes back because we are playing several notes. So of course, in this case, we can make the sustain just a little bit slower right here, so everything can be a little bit faster. All right. So the difference right now, if I disable poly, we're going to get it. Like, this works just like an envelope follower. But instead of following the envelope of the sound, it's going to follow the envelope that we are providing right here. Right. And they give you a visual representation of this. Now, do you notice what what happens right here? Is detecting the first note. It's actually doing the movement right here. But then since this one is playing, the other ones will not trigger a new envelope because the, the one, the first one, the first note is still playing. If we enable poly, it will react on pretty much all the notes. Yeah. And we get the same example on this one. Now, the thing is that uh, on this one, we get uh, pretty much uh, the same notes. Every, everything is playing just at the same time. So we are not going to get a lot. But if you go and enable the, let me just delete this one, and you enable the poly, you're going to get a lot of dots because we have a lot of notes right here. So let me just go here, maybe add a little bit of movement, just a tiny bit. And if we play it back, you're going to start getting a lot of dots. But they are independent. Right. Since all the notes are just playing at the same time, you could disable the poly and get just a much more uh, glued transition. All right, so that's it. And of course, you still get uh, right here the controls to control uh, all of this and the how much you want to do uh, the mix amount. And if you want to go up or you want to go down, right? Remember, we can go to negatives. All right. So then you get the AHDSR, which is just like the ADSR, but you get one more control, which is the H. That's it. That's the only difference. This works the same way. It looks a little bit different, but that's it. That's the only difference. You can still get the tag. You still get the decay, the release and sustain, but you get one extra, which is, which is the hold. That's it. Just to make it a little bit longer and you still get the, uh, the, uh, the mix control and the uh, the poly. All right, so again, I, I feel like I don't need to explain a lot right here. So that's it, guys. I hope you uh, learned something. And again, if you uh, feel a little bit confused about the H uh, AAH DSR and the ADSR, maybe you need to know a little bit more about ADSR. All right, so okay, so catch you on the next one.